In this demo, I'll be looking at a typical 2D interpolated table and how the axis values work, how to find them, and how to identify the, um, the, the RAM locations you'll need to log if you want to do some more in-depth uh, tuning. So here's a probably typical map. I have no idea what it is. I'm just pretty sure it's a 16 by 16 uh, 8 8 bit table. And you might have found this using WinOLS, which you should be using if you value your time. I just picked it up. Uh, I just looked up for this sequence of bytes and I landed on it. Then I messed around a bit till I found the the start of the table and just to confirm find the, find the cross reference and go back to code here. So we have this access code. Let me just mark this as an offset. I'll rename it. TBL. For lack of a better name. <coughs> and this is the code. The graph view doesn't show it much better, so I'll just stick to this view for now. So this is pretty typical. This is a very uh, usual code pattern. It, it'll load the table address into R4, then two other addresses into R5, R6, and then it'll jump to a function. So usually R5 and R6 are the axis lookup values. So let's see what that looks like. 8A50, and idea made a mess of things, so I usually have to undefine this, go back. And in this case, I, I can tell these are bytes. Sometimes um, IDA will think they're bytes, but they're 16, bits, 16 bit values. So for now, I'll just mark this as a byte. And it's also pretty obvious that there's 16 entries. So that also confirms that my table dimensions were correct. I'll just make this show, show a bit better. All right, so these are the lookup values. And same thing for the other one, undefine, make sure I got the right one, 16, yes. Okay, so we have a table, two axis lookup tables, and a function. Um, now what I've noticed is most of the time, uh, if R5 is X and R6 is Y, then the table is shown properly. That is, as you increase, as it looks up in the R5 value, it selects a column, and R6 will select the row. But I remember clearly that there's at least one or two maps that have that order transposed. What I mean is, uh, R6 will be columns, and R5 will be rows. And it's really a pain to figure out for sure which one it is in the code. So you have to rely on other maps, um, or really dig deep into the lookup lookup function, which I've done. Uh, it's a bit tedious. Uh, I I actually use a pencil and paper a lot for that, and you can know you can figure it out for sure. The other way would be with a uh, bit of a fancy logging, which I'll get into in a couple of minutes. So now we found the axis uh, lookup tables. Now let's go look at that function. Also, uh, just a quick tangent here, R456, those are the standard registers for passing in parameters to a function. There's actually a fourth one, which is R7, which is right here. If you're familiar with Super H, you know that JSR actually executes one opcode right after, uh, before jumping to the function, and that's how it loads argument number four. And the next question is, well, what happens to extra arguments? Because to look up data in a table, you need five things. You need where the table is, you need the access data, so that's x and y. Then you need a value for both input values, let's call them like that. So one of them is passed in R7, and the other one is passed on the stack. So the reference for that is, well, I figured it out, but it's also documented in this brick of a document which is just a C compiler which I think uh, Nissan has been using. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of choice, so it would be logical that they'd be using this compiler. 
and by convention it uses R4 through R7 for the four uh, first arguments and then it pushes the other arguments on the stack. It's <laughs> upside down to what I'm used to so as the code runs it pushes arguments here, argument area, then when it calls the function uh, the CPU takes care of putting the return address on the stack and then any local variables will be added onto that. Okay, back to code here. I'll just call this uh, table lookup. Sometimes when you're lucky they're reused a whole bunch of times. Here it's just used twice. <coughs> so what I want to do is figure out which value is used to index into 8A50, so the one in R5. Let's see what this looks like. And this is really where uh, Jidra shines because I think the decompiler makes this look a whole lot cleaner because uh, it moves around registers a whole lot. So actually, I'm going to pause this and figure it out before I continue. Okay, I think, I'm go I, think I know where I'm going with this. So I just uh, added this comment here to keep track of the registers. R4 is the table address. R5, oops, actually. Address, address, okay. So let's see what happens with R5, with access 0, I just called it that way. Uh, R5, first thing it does, copies to R0, and it clobbers R5, okay, fair enough. Then jumps into this, and it passes in uh, 15 into R4. R4. And this is going to be the first access interpolation. So I know by now that uh, 15 is the number of elements minus 1, so it's a 16 element access lookup table. And indeed I can see there's a loop here, this thick arrow, so it loops, it uh, pulls out a value from the table and then it decrements and loops over and then once it found two items here it pulls the values from the table, it does some math. This is just a horrible division function. So it's uh, basically figuring out a fraction just for the rest of the interpolation. But that doesn't really matter for now. All I wanted to know is uh, which, which value it uh, uses for the lookup. So I know R0 came from here, came from R5, which was the address. Okay. So it pulls the value does a bit of math and compares it to R5. Oh yeah, by the way, what I said earlier about uh, the typical registers used for arguments, well here it is using R0. Uh, it happens. So R5 is compared to R1. R5, which one was that? When we call this function, that was R7. Okay, good. So, let's move back a bit. When the table lookup function was called, it passed in a value into R7. This value was copied to R5. And this value is used to find where we are in the axis table. I'll just write that down before I forget. Okay. Now for the other one, the other axis is R6, and here it is, uh, it's set into R0, and then we call this function, but strangely it's not using the same, we'll see why, and it looks an awful lot like the other one, this time it's also copying from R0, and where did R0 come from? It came from R6. Yeah, we know that. What is it compared to? R5. Okay, where does R5 come from? Ah, okay. So it came from that argument that was pushed on the stack. Perfect. That's axis 0. Axis 1, sorry, value. Good. And we also know that 
um, the value is a byte because it's extended unsigned and in the function too it was doing a comparison of just bytes sometimes you'll have one axis that's 8-bit uh, values and the other one's 16 bits so there'll be different lookup functions here I don't know why, the, why they're using two different functions but it doesn't really matter for what we're after here I'll just interrupt myself uh, for a second because I I figured out in the meantime why it is that we're using two different uh, interpolators for both axes and the reason is simple this one was uh, the simpler version where it's pulling a value from the uh, axis table and comparing it to our our input value whereas the other one it's shifting left by two positions so it's multiplying by four so that's that happens sometimes and it's something to keep in mind when uh, figuring out uh, scalings or when logger values just don't make sense sometimes it pulls tricks like this um, shifting left by one or two positions uh, it depends so it's something to look out for so let's move back to where we are where we were so what did I say r7 is the lookup value for x is zero where does r7 come from it was copied from R0, which came from here, which is a RAM axis. And that came from actually FFFF 86B0 plus 18, that's C8. There it is, well, there's nothing, it's just plain RAM. But if you were to log some parameters, this would be the one for x is 0. So you could log this one and log the other one, which comes from the stack, as you recall, which was the first one pushed on the stack. And sometimes these look a bit weird, uh, depending on how IDA uh, analyzes it. Here, let's see. Okay, so it just pushes the, a byte at R15, which is the stack pointer at plus three bytes, uh, plus three. Okay, that's just details. What I really want to know is where this come from, comes from. R0 came from R0 plus 12. I'll have to backtrack a bit. I actually have a script script to do this. Let me just uh, fire that up. Okay, for some reason that script wasn't in my repo. It's somewhere else. I'll have to, uh, to push that eventually. And I used to have it set up with a nice shortcut because it was something I used pretty often. In exactly this scenario, you have a, a base plus offset address and then R12, one of the registers is set. Here it's not so bad. Sometimes you have to go all the way up in the function to figure out what's the value in there and then you got to find the offset. It's a real pain. So with a script, it's just get mama access like this. And it computes the address and even makes a cross-reference because uh, if you just type in the address, and if you work it out manually and c do this comment, IDA doesn't know, it, it can't keep track of this. But when you create a manual cross-reference like the script just did, I can mouse over to this, press X, and then there you go. So this makes it really useful when you're analyzing uh, specific algorithms. But in this case, I was just after the address for this value which is used to look up into the second axis. Uh, that's all I had to say on this topic. I hope this wasn't too long. And uh, again, this might not be the most efficient method, but I think it's the one that gives the most um, precise results uh, compared to just uh, going in, say, WinOLS and looking at the axis and look at these numbers and oh yeah that looks like the access da data for whatever fuel table you're looking at this will give you the definite answer alright thanks for watching